fun fact for you to start the video off. These jeans, the red, actually is the same dye that the British Redcoats used when they were attacking America. Also, sorry to interrupt, if you want 5% off these jeans, Redcast gave me a code, ironsnail5. So just type that in when you buy them and 5% will come off. You can also use my link. Thank you, Redcast. I'd like to apologize. I didn't realize how saucy that first pose looked, but today we are reviewing a very special pair of jeans. It is a collaboration between Redcast Heritage and Tanyuki, and we're talking about why Japanese denim is so expensive and so fancy. Redcast Heritage sent these to me for free, so I have to tell you that, otherwise you'll think I'm lying. Also, this video is sponsored by Huckberry. By these shorts, actually. These are from Catton. They are lovely. I really like them, and uh, I suggest you get them, but more on that later. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna go into the specifics of these jeans, but also I did a review of the base denim used on these before from Tanuki. So look up Tanuki Redcast the Iron Snail or click the thing above my head if I remember to put it there. And you can get more info about Redcast denim specifically because this is Redcast denim with an over dye. So we'll be going over the dye, which is an ancient dye from the matter plant, which the tentacles, or actually they're called roots, dye is not made of octopuses. Although some snails, they got ground up a long time ago and they made purple. We'll be talking about the denim because it is unbelievable and as you wash it, it'll change quite a bit, I think, even more than regular Redcast denim. We'll go over the fit because finally, there is a slim, straight fit from Tanuki. There's also some quirks about it that I'll tell you about. I'll explain specifically what over dyeing is and then there is also a giveaway from Redcast and Tanuki that I will talk about later. There's also a squirrel stuck in that trash can, so while we do the review, I'm gonna try and get that squirrel. Redcast and Tanuki debuted their new fit. Do you believe in life after love? Not a big deal. I do stuff like that every single day. It is a slim straight fit. Thank God. I realize that I like slim straight or straight. Tapered makes me look like a carrot, so very happy to see that from Tanuki and Redcast. I kind of went true to size, kind of sized up one. I'm usually between a 29 and a 30. I went with a 30 and it fits perfect. I would suggest sizing up one just in case. I feel like always a little too big looks better than a little too small. The only thing is it's a medium rise, but I feel like it's just medium rise. It's kind of a little bit low. And if you pull it up too high, and you have certain tools. Real quick rundown of these jeans, then we'll get into more detail. One is that they are called the Ono jeans. Hono, I believe. I don't speak Japanese, sadly, but it's H-O-M-U-R-A. When you type it into Google Translate, it sounds like this. Hono. So I think that's how it's pronounced, but it means burns with a blue flame, which makes sense because the pants are blue. da ba dee ba da ba da But anyways, only 100 pairs of these jeans were made because it was an incredibly laborious process that we'll get into in a little bit just a lot of dipping and dying. I didn't really know where to put this in the video, so something that I found that was cool is if you look closely at the stitching, you'll see part of it is red, part of it is still yellow, and that is because the over dye process obviously covers everything, but these are cotton poly stitches, which is very common in the industry, but the red parts of the stitches are cotton, and the polyester parts don't take in dye because that's not how polyester thread works, so they stayed yellow. Red cast denim sounds like it would be red, but it's actually purple, now it's red, but when you just get pure red cast denim, it's made using synthetic indigo dye, which is pure indigo dye, and it doesn't have any sulfides in it, which would distort the color and make it more green cast, and that's why you see natural indigo products have a little bit more green in them. This is totally pure indigo. But that is the base fabric of these jeans, and then it is over dyed, which again we'll talk about later. But when we're looking at this denim, it has an unbelievable amount of character that I think is subdued by the over dye process, and I think as you wash them and wear them more, it will come out a lot. But it is 16 and a half ounce denim. It goes through a bunch of processes that, again, we'll talk about in a little bit, but it comes out of the box incredibly soft and virtually will not shrink because it's been in water so many times and enzyme baths and all those good things. So it is very, very soft. Soft, which when denim with this much texture is very very soft feels very cool So I highly suggest you rub it But anyways the interesting thing about red cast denim and tanuki in general is that they really emphasize the fact that they use Different types of cotton for the warp and weft the weft is the inside of the jeans The warp is the outside of the jeans and what tanuki does is they use Australian long staple cotton on the inside of the jeans the weft and long staple cotton is stronger That's not really applicable here. I guess it is a little bit But the big deal is that long staple cotton is 
is a lot smoother and silkier and softer. So that's on the inside of the jeans, so your legs will be a little bit more comfortable. The outside of the jeans uses short staple Texas cotton, which is rougher, it has a lot more character and a rougher hand feel. And that's on the outside, so it doesn't touch those little leggies of yours, but it makes the jeans that much more interesting to look at, which is very, very cool. I can never feel that stuff, but I think I have something wrong because I also can't feel most emotions. This video is sponsored by Huckberry. Huckberry. Everybody that I'm friends with says, oh, you got a Huckleberry sponsorship? And I'm like, you can't say that. I'm sponsored by them. Today we're looking at the Catton shorts. They are made of 98% cotton, 2% spandex, so they are very stretchy, which may bother some people in like regular pants or jeans. But for shorts, I feel like if the weather is bad enough where I need to wear shorts, I don't care what they do as long as I stop sweating. I've been trying to get shorter shorts recently because I feel like they look cool, they're hip and stylish. So these are six and a half inches, which is uh, to some people, which is a pretty short short for the most part. It looks cool, shows off some thigh, which is always appreciated by the ladies. Taylor always says, let me see your thighs. I'm like, no babe. <laughs> No. And these are also very heavy feeling shorts, not like heavy and sweaty. They just feel like they're very high quality. There's also herringbone seam tape on the inside, which helps to not have them lose their shape over time. Anyways, though, the cat and shorts are very nice. If you like them, then you can use my link right there. Click on it and buy the shorts and then Huckberry it will just clap. Good job, Michael. Okay, so the dye of these jeans is very interesting because Redcast could have used a synthetic dye, but they went with the Matter plant, which sounds two things, one like Grey Matter, two like the Mad Hatter plant. I don't think it's either of those, although people do say do not eat the matter plant if you are pregnant. I don't think you should eat it anyways, but in ancient times it was considered a medicinal plant if you had freckles. So there's a lot of different ways to extract the actual color from the matter plant root. I don't know how Tanuki does it, but it seems like two most, well the first way I think, well the first, I, there's a ton of different ways to do it, I can't explain it because they say that they think this dye was used in 1500 BC, but also they say the way to extract the color from the root was found out in 1861. So that's about a billion years difference. So I don't particularly know when or where this got figured out, but all that matters is that it makes a very beautiful color. And most importantly, it was used by hermits to dye their clothes saffron. That sentence. Okay, so now you may be thinking, well, how does this whole process work? We have red cast denim, which comes blue and looks regular and doesn't have all this red, and we have this dyeing process. I'm dying to know what happens. You may be thinking to yourself, but you're probably not that silly. Over dyeing is exactly what it sounds like. It is a form of garment dyeing. Basically, jeans are there. They are blue. They are red cast denim. But there is a few things that aren't on the jeans. Well, there's one thing, I guess, in this case, and that would be the vegetable tanned leather patch on the back. That is not on there yet. But they take the jeans, they put them in a bath of this dye that is all set and ready to go. They pull them back out. Boom. They have red on the weft which is normally white and then you are good to go now if we go into the process a little bit more the jeans are made like I said without the patch then they go through an enzyme wash which softens the jeans up a lot and most importantly it removes all the starch that is on and inside of the jeans then what happens is they take the pants again by hand and they shove it into the dye bath and then they keep it there for a while they pull it out they rinse it with water and they let it dry completely but after they do that it is not the correct shade of red it's too light still so after it dries, they take it again and they submerge it into the dye and they let it stay there again for a while and they keep doing that process until it is the desired darkness of red that they want. Then finally, once they have the desired shade of red, they take the jeans, dry them, they're all good. Well, all right, okay, so you may be thinking, what's in it for me? Well, I got some good news for you. Redcast Heritage Co. and I think Tanuki are giving away three things. If you buy the jeans, Redcast will be pulling some people's names out, three people's names out, and you could either get this Tanuki wallet, this Tanuki hand-painted banner, or a 100 pound Redcast gift card. That's, oops, I'm using this for light. That is a very heavy gift card. If you don't want these jeans specifically, you can use my code to still get 5% off anything on the website. So that's pretty cool too. Anyways, that is the end of the video. I will see you all next week. Like I said, July is going to be a crazy month for the Iron Snail. Also, so is August. I can't tell you why. I can, but I won't. It's very exciting. It's finally here. It's finally here. That's all you need to know.